Annabelle stared down at an ancient parchment filled with mysterious text. Allow me to offer you a crucial hint, the potentate said. No is an unacceptable answer to my questions. Having said this, she blinked one eye, shrugged her shoulders with a thunderous crack of her spine, and disappeared from the room. Quill trembling in hand, Annabelle stared at the examination parchment in front of her. Not a word of it was written in English. She pressed her legs together, needing desperately not only to eat, but also to pee. And no wasn't acceptable? Did that mean she should answer yes to everything? She couldn't read what was written on the page. How could she blindly answer a parchment full of questions in a strange language? Suddenly, the sound of sniffling interrupted her thoughts, and Annabelle locked her gaze on the battered suit of armor at the right side of the door. Was the suit sniffling? The sniffling persisted. Annabelle tried to concentrate upon the page in front of her, but... Her eyes crossed and her stomach rumbled, and then the sniffling convulsed into a sob. Excuse me, is someone crying? Another sob. <laughs> Can I get you something? Annabel glanced around the table in search of a tissue. A high, thin voice answered. Since you ask, would you be so kind as to pick up that platter of shortbread cookies? And carry it over here to me, please. Remembering the shock she'd already had from that cookie platter, she shook her head at the suit. I won't. I don't trust it. You don't trust it, only because you don't know how to do it properly. Remember, you're in fairy, and one better, you're at court. You oughtn't to reach out and paw cookies with your filthy little hands. What kind of manners is that? To do it properly? You must have someone offer them to you. Or you must offer them to someone else. You want me to offer you a cookie? Annabelle arched one eyebrow. Well, I don't usually eat sugar. But since you mention it, I haven't eaten since the potentate trapped me in here, and it's been weeks. Annabelle gasped. Weeks trapped in a suit of armor without food? Perhaps he had really deserved it, and she shouldn't interfere. But then, she had her own problems and needed some interference herself. If I bring you that plate of cookies, will you help me translate my examination? I'll do better than that if you'll bring me the whole platter. The voice was losing patience. Deal. Annabelle reached for the platter. The silver tray was cool but harmless to the touch. Okay, then. Be my guest. She lifted the platter toward the tall suit of armor. Kindly lift up my helmet's guard, please. Annabelle lifted the rusted-out helmet guard, which creaked with age and scarce use. A small elf scrambled out through the helmet guard and plunged bodily into the chocolate icing of the shortbread cookie. At last, the elf emerged, frosting plastering his short mustache. Pardon me. Much obliged to you, he mumbled through a mouth of cookie. I love these things, he said and licked his fingers. Annabelle's mouth watered. Will you offer me a cookie now? I would, my dear. But I can't lift the platter to make the offer. Sorry, she groaned. Me too. I will have a look at that parchment, though. I'm Raymond. Sir, if you don't mind. Sir, you are a knight? Sir Raymond looked a little peeved. Fifth generation, Annabelle frowned. You don't seem to, um, uh, fill up your suit all the way. Sir Raymond grunted. Wait till you're an eon old. Annabelle lifted one shoulder for the elf to hop on. Do you mind? Sir Raymond hopped onto her shoulder, which was natural enough. He was nearly the same weight as a pigeon. I hope you can read this, Annabelle said, peering down to the inscrutable parchment. Knights are a well-educated class. I read and write nine languages. Now let me see. This should be easy. Sir Raymond peered over Annabelle's shoulder. Eh, you good with lion taming? Any other big cat? Tiger? 
Jaguar? Annabelle flushed. Er, Tabby? But what does a big cat have to do with spycraft? You might be surprised. But go ahead and put down mid-level. Annabelle wrote it down. How's your hand with a lasso? Any experience with cattle rustling? No. Better leave that one blank then. I guess so, Annabelle sighed. What about languages? English. That's it? She squirmed. Afraid so. Aren't you even fluent at cussing? Annabelle's face heated. You said manners were important in fairy. Cursing isn't manners. Yes, <laughs> you've got to be at least bilingual to make a good spy. Write down English in barnyard. Annabelle wrote it down. Can you cook? What does cooking have to do with a spy adventure? Well, for one thing, if you can't cook for yourself, you'll have to eat the Lost Boys food, and that could be lethal. Annabelle frowned. I burn marshmallows. Sir Raymond shrugged. Put down, can cook a little bit. Can you scrub, wash dishes, do laundry? Annabelle nodded. Yes. Sir Raymond's eyebrow arched. Can you keep a secret? She kept many for her father. I'm a fortress for secrets. Raymond squinted at the remaining text. Well, that about does it. Sign her name on the last line. Annabelle signed in pseudonym. Alvina P. Appleblossom. And the words immediately ignited through with an iridescent flourish of light. Sir Raymond clapped her on the back with a thump. There you go. That makes it legal. Annabelle stared at the gleaming signature, which was her new alias. The exotic silver light winking and blinking in conspiratorial mischief. It seemed to say, Forget who you once were. From now on, everything is going to be different. The potentate perused Annabelle's test parchment with a grim frown while Annabelle waited, palms slippery with sweat. Finally, the potentate cleared her throat and spoke. Let me be clear. You must be absolutely truthful with me while you are in my service, and as for lying to anyone else, you must do that as little as possible. Annabelle considered. But don't spies always have some kind of cover? Deception is all part of the job, isn't it? The potentate tutted. Human children are terrible liars. Whenever they attempt it, they forget their own inventions. Then they have to think of an entirely new story on the spot. The second story crosses wives with the first, and before they know it, they've created an, an impossible tangle. But what should I say, then, if I'm supposed to protect my cover? Stick as close to the truth as you possibly can. Tell a lot of boring tales. Make yourself as dull as paint. But I forbid you to lie. Annabelle's jaw went slack. What does that mean? She wondered. What was a lie, anyway? What was the truth? Was it keeping a secret, or was it telling the secret? It means be clever, be creative, be sly, but don't lie. Annabel swallowed. Yes, Your Majesty. Very good. Will you take an oath of your own free will, not to reveal that you are my agent, nor to reveal what I tell you? Annabel shivered, but the potentate's sharp blue gaze clapped upon hers, and she couldn't find any words but the ones that potentate wished to hear. She had to find out what happened to her father. She squeezed her eyes shut and she answered, I will. Very well. Start with your name and then repeat after me. I do most solemnly swear by eyes and teeth, heart and tongue, by the white tree and the west wind, that I do now enter into the service of Her Majesty as she spoke. Some kind of invisible influence worked its way inside of Annabel's mind, sorting through little cubbies of suspicion and drawers of judgment, throwing things out and tucking things in, as if the potentate were weaving a sort of net, 
binding up thoughts and feelings here and disposing of other things there. It was a strange sensation, and not altogether unpleasant, but to Annabel, whose natural suspicions were already pricked, very dispossessing. After Annabel repeated the final words, the potentate clapped her hands. <coughs> Miss Appleblossom, I think you will do. Your mission is to find Pan and his band of boys and learn the secrets of their camp. Learn everything you can from the flora and fauna. Then return in ten days and make your report. Can you do this? Yes, Majesty. Very well. We shall not have you perishing for lack of resources. Let us see to that now. Annabel exhaled her relief. She could eat an entire platter of cookies. The potentate clapped her hands and Tinsel reappeared. Take Miss Appleblossom to the tailor. 